hello everyone. Uh, I'm Katarzyna. I work for Red Hat, uh, and I work in QE department. I'm not a software developer. Uh, I'm a QE person, and I will talk how we test our uh, system. And it's not about every Red Hat uh, programs. It's only about um, my team. So it's only about uh, Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization Manager. So this is downstream version of Oviet. So this is tool which uh, helps you to manage uh, your virtualization. So uh, on which level we are? It's uh, imagine that you are a developer. Uh, you uh, develop your application. It passed all your unit tests. It passed all your functional tests. Uh, it was already built. So you have RPM or, in our case, it's RPM. Maybe you have uh, another packages. Uh, you want to distribute to user. Uh, but before you do that, uh, you want to test if everything is okay. Uh, so you want to test how it will work on real system, uh, in real cases, and so on. Uh, so uh, what's the, you give it to us, and what we do? Uh, we develop your application on real environment. Uh, we try to do it on S, S production system as possible. Uh, so for example, this is system for virtualization. Uh, we will run uh, what we can on uh, bare metal machines, not on uh, virtual machines. Uh, we will use official APIs. Uh, we will not take a look on your code at all or almost at all. Uh, we will uh, simulate user. Uh, more or less, we will do what uh, your user will do. Uh, and uh, we will test both negative and positive cases, uh, but we will do uh, much more positive. It's like, okay, there's a problem if something is broken, but it's much bigger problem if you cannot do uh, some case. Uh, so, what are problems uh, in, in such situation? Uh, first of all, we touch environment. Actually, we break this environment, and we do it on purpose. Uh, we want to test how the system will behave if we break uh, network connection, uh, if we break a disk. Uh, can it recover? Uh, so the problem is you have to maintain this environment, and it's hard. Uh, what else? It takes time. Uh, you have to set up this environment. It takes time. It takes, it's not a, a fraction of seconds. It's minutes. Sometimes it's half an hour. Uh, when you have to run your test, it is quite short, usually. And then you have to clean this environment. And because this test may fail at any moment, you have to have this clean up quite well. You don't want to reinstall everything starting from the operating system every time. Okay, so, and of course we want to aut automate it. We may do it manually, uh, but imagine that you will have to do it every week the same, install everything, click on it, click on ev uh, other thing. So why we want to use Python? Uh, first of all, it's easy. Uh, quite a lot of people in QE departments are not software engineering people. Uh, they have some background in IT. Uh, quite often they are from uh, admin departments. Uh, the only language they know is Bash. And you have to somehow force them to write code. Uh, you don't want them to you don't want to teach them Java or C++ or anything like that. Uh, Python is easy. They can understand it. Uh, on the other hand, it's a normal, uh, mature language. Uh, you have libraries for almost everything. 
uh, and it's popular. So if you need people who really know uh, this language, for example, you want people uh, who will write tests and you want people who will write libraries and so on. And for those people, you want someone with coding experience. And finding someone who knows Python is not that hard. Uh, so what one, what some, one such test does, uh, it must get resources. Uh, you don't want to run your test on the same machine on which your system will be uh, developed. Because quite often you will want to, for example, reboot this uh, machine and test uh, what will happen. So you have to get machine on which you will run this uh, test code. Uh, you have to get test definition. Uh, you usually keep it in a repository like Git. Uh, and you need uh, the resources. Uh, the real resources like uh, bare metal hosts or virtual machines or uh, some kind of storages. Uh, then you have to install uh, product packages. Uh, you have to take them from somewhere. So you have to specify from which repository you want to take. Uh, then you have to configure uh, this, uh, this product and uh, your test may want to change this configuration. Uh, then there's what's specific for the test. This is uh, setup, uh, because, for example, when you simulate a user and t uh, test if you can add virtual machine on your, uh, to your installation, you have to do everything which is required for this step. Uh, then, to, then you have to run this uh, test. Uh, then you need uh, to perform teardown. And this part quite often is more complicated than the test itself. Uh, because this two, uh, uh, two uh, parts, uh, setup and running test, uh, they may fail at any moment and it may leave your environment in a really crazy state and you want to clean it up. Uh, then, you, of course, you have to collect logs. Uh, you cannot... Uh, okay, you don't run the tests manually. You run them from Jenkins overnight and uh, when you come to work in the morning, you have uh, the results of these executions. Uh, but you cannot assume that you will have access to these machines where you run this test. You have to copy every log which may be important, and you, you have to copy it. Uh, you have to then uh, clean the resources, uh, because you will run next test. Uh, and you have to report results. Uh, you keep your tests in some kind of uh, test management system. So you have to track execution of every test and see that it passed on uh, this release, failed on this release, failed because of something. Uh, okay. So uh, how we do it? Uh, we use tool which uh, we found whenever we can. So for example, uh, we use Jenkins, we use Farman, we use Git. Uh, the problem is that uh, we don't have, we didn't find uh, anything which will help us uh, for uh, blocking, uh, for managing the resources and for uh, leasing them to this test, then checking in which state they are and leasing to, uh, to another one. And uh, we have our library, we called it art, and this is library for running uh, this test. So, uh, okay. Uh, so what this library can do? Uh, first of all, we use official APIs, and we use all of them. So for example, in our case, you have uh, Python SDK, Java SDK, uh, CLI, uh, GUI, and uh, REST API. 
And you don't want to run the same test uh, for every API. You want to run it once and uh, do your library, uh, let your library to run it for every API. Uh, what else? Uh, we don't uh, run uh, test collect uh, uh, test collecting uh, functionality by ourselves. Uh, we use Nose for it. So everything which you have in Nose, like tagging, uh, you can use here. And when you take a look on uh, the code, one test is just a unit test, and usually it's not that long because everything uh, what is in this test. Uh, it's only, when we go back here, it's only this yarn test, uh, this setup yarn test teardown. Or sometimes even without, uh, setup and teardown when it's common for, uh, a lot of tests in one suit. Okay. Uh, we have a lot of helpers. We have, uh, helpers for, uh, P open parameter, sometimes it's too hard uh, for people when you want to run something quickly. Uh, it's a little too complicated. Uh, we have uh, tools for managing remote files, directories, and things like that. Uh, you don't want your user to run IM minus IF or anything. Uh, some slight mistake. They will break something really, really bad. Uh, and of course, helpers which are, which we use in our tests. Uh, you don't want to run, uh, IP tables, uh, every, uh, every IP tables you, or every time you want to simulate, uh, net, uh, network connection failure. So we have just the uppers for it. Uh, same for disk error simulation, same for load simulation. Uh, and multi-threading. Multi-threading is hard. Uh, multi-threading in tests usually means that uh, you want to uh, do something, and in other threads you just want to wait for uh, some uh, event to arise. And that's it. Thread uh, pool executor is almost easy enough. Sometimes it's not easy enough. Uh, okay, so, yeah, uh, this was the library which we use for running the test. So when we go back, yeah, so we have this part uh, from setup environment to run, uh, to teardown. Uh, but still you have to install uh, product packages, install, uh, install configure this product. Uh, collect logs, release resources, and so on. So, uh, getting machine, getting test definition, uh, we use Jenkins, Jenkins uh, can do it for you. Uh, we use also Jenkins for collecting logs. Uh, we use our brokers uh, for getting resources and then for cleaning them. I will go to this point later. Uh, but still, we have these points, install uh, product packages, install uh, the product, uh, install uh, configure. So, uh, we have something which we call uh, job runner. And this is actually what is, what is run by uh, Jenkins. Uh, and we have something called jobs for every stage of this test. So, this is installation versus running this test. Uh, this is, for example, for upgrade, because sometimes you want to test what will happen with uh, your system uh, during upgrade. Uh, and each of such jobs defines its cleanup. So, for example, if you have job for installation, uh, it defines that cleanup is uh, remove all these packages. Uh, okay, and it has plugins for getting resources, because sometimes you need resources on this stage just for installation. Sometimes you need it within the test. Uh, sometimes you need it also here. So how we, uh, what we do with, for getting resources, uh, we have, we call it resource brokers and uh, 
we actually have two types of resources. Uh, some of them you can just create on demand uh, to some level, like uh, VMs or uh, NFS shares or iSCSI shares. Some of them you just have a pool, nothing else you can do. Uh, for example, bare metal hosts. And of course, uh, when you have bare metal hosts, they are not all of them, they are not the same. Uh, so your test has to specify that it needs to host one of them with uh, a such setup, another one with another. Uh, okay, and uh, of course, when you have uh, resources which you can create on demand, uh, when they are returned to the pool, you just destroy them. You don't try to clean it. Uh, but when you have something you cannot create on demand, like the meta host, uh, you want to check in which state uh, they are returned. You try to clean it. If you cannot do it, uh, you just reinstall everything. Uh, this is uh, why we use Foreman. You just mark this uh, host for built-in Foreman and reboot it. So if we cannot fix it, we will, we will not spend time on it. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so we have integration with external tools like bug trackers. If you know that there's a bug in, uh, which is found by uh, this test, sometimes you don't want to run this test. Because, for example, because of this bug, environment may be in such state that you cannot do anything. It may be so broken that it doesn't make sense to run another test. Uh, okay, uh, version control system and so on. Uh, so, uh, my main thing is, do you know such libraries, such tools? Because uh, as you have seen, we, have, we use a lot of tools written by ourselves and at my previous job, we were in the same state. Uh, we also use what was publicly available, uh, but then we still didn't have anything uh, for getting resources. Uh, and we also wrote the same tools. And it's like, I don't believe there are no tools for it. Because if it happened twice in two, totally independent companies, it must be a common problem. So uh, if you can, if you know anything which can help, I will be very thankful for uh, any suggestions. So thank you. Thank you, Katrina. So uh, we've got plenty of time for questions. Has anyone got a question they'd like to ask? Hands up. Okay, I'll bring the microphone. Hey, um, do you know of any solutions um, if you have a bare metal server and you maybe need to push a button or, um, well, any, anything that wouldn't require a robot, like taking out a disk or something like that? <laughs> uh, no. Okay, we don't do things like that. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? One at the back. Maybe I think we can hear you, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> yeah. You, sp you, you ask the question, then Katrina, you repeat the question. On the, for the microphone. Uh, is there a um, product for those kind for managing those kind of tests? Just like just like an integration between Jenkins for one and you can customize to reproduce the same uh, workflow that you have described. Okay, so the question is if there is package which uh, enables uh, to reproduce this flow and gives you uh, integration with Jenkins and Foreman and so on. I don't know about anything like that. If I knew, I would use it and not write again something. 
Uh, if you know something, please share it. Uh, okay, I hope one day uh, we will open source it. Uh, because it's not true that everything which is in Red Hat is open source. Uh, some of our tools is not open source. Uh, I hope it will be open source, but uh, one thing is politics, another thing is uh, code state now. Uh, I would rather not show this code uh, publicly, at least parts of it. Any more questions? Um, are you doing all this um, stuff remotely? So you're using Paramico to um, execute stuff on the remote VMs or uh, servers, or where do you like Jenkins runs the unit tests, unit tests, and uses your framework and does an SSH to to the server, or how does it work? Okay, so it's like uh, in Jenkins you get a host on which you run uh, code uh, this code. And then when you want to uh, run something on uh, remote machines, because one of the, uh, one test usually uh, uses at least two machines, uh, then you do it via SSH. And this is painful. This is, for example, uh, Pyamico is not very good. Uh, it's not also very easy to use. Is there something better? <laughs> No, unfortunately, we use Paramico. We just uh, have our own wrappers for it. So it's like, it's just, you write, uh, you specify what you want to run on this host uh, with uh, such credentials, this comment, and you just get uh, output. And we then code, of course. Anything else? Any other questions from the audience? Uh, one thing I was going to say was that I know that we, where I'm working, we've set up, we've got uh, code to set up, I, to, to run IP tables and then tear them down again after the test is finished. And um, if you, I was going to ask you if you'd open sourced any of those helpers that you listed on your slide, but the answer <laughs> is no. Um, the other thing is that we've recently open sourced something to allow you to um, set up network namespaces in Linux. Uh, we're running IP tables in namespaces. So which might be useful to you, and that's called nomenclature. Okay, to search for thank it. you. Okay, any other questions? Okay, well, thank you again, Katrina, and sorry for mispronouncing your name. <laughs>